much. I'm so excited to be here, and especially talking about sustainability in schools. It makes sense that I'm speaking on this since it's the topic of my research at CSU. And to tell you a little bit about where I come from in this perspective, I wanted to study buildings and how they could positively impact the health of occupants. Could we build them better so that they reduce asthma or increase productivity? And could we save money in the process through operations? And in this, I realized that buildings actually have more capacity than I even gave them credit for. But before that, I want to tell you a bit about where I'm from. I grew up in rural Oklahoma. Both my parents had careers in major cities, but they chose a longer commute in order to live in the country. They loved it. I grew up working in the garden, shucking corn, canning peas. And one memory I will never forget is working with my grandmother to nurse a sick calf back to health. We would fix her bottle every four or four times a day. And this ended up being pretty easy since she had moved him into her laundry room until he got better. <laughs> and thinking back on these memories, I realized that my family raised me to hold certain beliefs. I value local business and local agriculture. I believe in a responsible use of resources. And I feel empathy for all creatures. And thinking about those, they all fall under the realm of sustainability. It's a common, common values that we all share. It's not tied to political beliefs or religion. Um, so I realized I really wanted to uphold these common values in my work. And I realized that I also really understand sustainability and embrace it because I experienced it. So in my work, I wanted to design places that were sustainability experiences. And it made sense that I chose schools to do that. Because what better place than the place that houses the next generation. If they can experience sustainability and embrace it, they could lead a sustainable future. And I think we can all agree that changes need to be made in our school systems. We've all heard calls for reform. The most visible for, to me is the failing infrastructure of many schools. Why for so long were they built like prisons? Why are many covered in mold and toxins that are causing asthma and headaches and reducing academic performance? What about the habits of this generation? Schools are supposed to be a place that instill really great habits in kids. Are they learning how to eat healthy? Are they getting outside and exercising? A lot of times not. And also, why do we most often use the same educational model that we've been using for the past 200 years? Are students today learning collaboration and creativity and systems thinking, these 21st century skills that they're going to need in the future? Can they learn them in this model? I don't think they can. So listening to all these calls for reform, it's really clear to me that they all fall under the realm of sustainability. And I think if we can gather our voices together and using a common, common language, common values, we could achieve a lot instead of using exclusive agendas. So in my research, I wanted to see how this could be possible. I found schools that were doing this successfully. They were creating a holistic sustainability experience for students. They were doing that by integrating sustainability into their infrastructure, into their educational program, and into their organizational culture. And so when I studied these schools, I found these components, and I also found specific strategies that they were using that led to their success. So I want to start off with some really cool case studies that illustrate each of these three components. First is Pine Jog Elementary. This is a public school, and when it was built, it was with the intention that the building itself would be a teaching tool. So it's a really great example of sustainability integrated into the infrastructure. The architect made a really great effort to reveal building components, to reveal how resources flow in and out of the building so that the students could learn about it. They celebrated the site in this building. They have a really great surrounding natural environment, and they wanted to bring that into the school so that kids could go out and explore it. They also have an extensive hydroponic garden. This garden supplies vegetables and fruits, and specifically thousands and thousands of strawberries that they have for their annual strawberry festival, which is a fundraiser that sustains this hydroponic garden. The building also illustrates the flow of resources, like I said. So this is an example of water. Students can see how water hits the roof, flows into a cistern, and can then be used to water their plants. They understand that water is a precious resource and that they have a role to play in conserving it. 
Here are two different types of renewable energy, photovoltaic and solar thermal. Not only can students see these, they're not hidden on a roof. They can also see how they're running. The data, the amount of energy that each of these panels are producing flows into this green touch screen that they can utilize to see how they're performing and the teachers can use as a teaching tool. Because the data is there, they can do projects about it. They can do math equations and science projects. And daylight. This building is an amazing, has an amazing use of daylight. So much so that the classrooms and hallways, you don't even have to turn on the light for most of the day. Research has shown that when you bring daylight and views to the outside into classrooms, test scores can be raised as much as 13%. This also reduces headaches and ab ab or absenteeism and increases performance. So these are some specific strategies that Pine Job used as well as all the other schools I looked at. They had an engaging and inspiring design that illustrated to students that their community values learning and that, of course, they would build them a beautiful school to learn in. The building illustrated the resource cycles and they monitored those resources so that students could not only see them but also engage with how efficient they are. And they brought the outdoors inside by using daylight and views and giving kids natural areas to explore. Okay, organizational culture, Kennard Middle School. This is a school right here in Fort Collins, and they've done some really great things to integrate sustainability into the, into the culture of how the school runs. And their efforts are primarily spearheaded by a student group called Kennard Cares. This student-led group has done some amazing things to educate their peers about sustainability and change the practices of the whole district. One specific instance is their, or is their composting program. This program has diverted over 40,000 pounds of solid waste in the past two years. Through this program, they learn about food, they learn about the process of waste, they learn about their role to play in that. And the team at Canard Cares educates their peers on this and they also celebrate their successes and publicize it to their community. And the district supports them, their teachers support them, their principal supports them, and not only do they think this is a good idea, they want to see it move forward even more. So the district has set sustainability goals, and every year they track and measure how many they've met. And they put out an annual report to publicize these successes. And at Peter School District, sustainability is really a value-based and value-driven thing. They see it as something that they have to do. They have to, one, save money, and it's good for the environment, and it's really good for the students. This guides all of their decisions. Students are used, are facilitated in, in leading these initiatives, and they're empowered to do so. Everyone has a commitment to it, and they use metrics to measure how far they've gone and how much good that they've accomplished. Finally, a great example of sustainability integrated into educational programs. This is a public charter school, Learning Gate, and here the teachers have figured out how to make sustainability a foundation of what they do. A lot of educators these days can't add something else. They, their plates are full, they're worried about testing. At LearningGate, they realize that sustainability is an add-on. It's not something you can just tack on. It's the foundation of how they teach. It's less about changing the content and more about changing the context for them. The teachers utilize their place as a teaching tool. A really great example of this um, is the students knew that they had a green building and it's supposed to be healthier for them. It's supposed to have good air quality. But they wanted to see if that was true, so their science teacher helped them design an experiment. They set up two terrariums, one with air from a conventional school and one with air from their school. And they put Daphne flies in these terrariums and measured how fast the Daphne flies died. And it turned out the Daphne flies in the good air lasted very long and had healthy lives, and the others didn't do so well. And so the kids learned about scientific inquiry, they learned the state standards that they had to uh, learn to begin with, but they also learned about pollution and about the effect of our physical and natural environments on our health. At Learning Gate, they try to get the kids outside several times a day to work in the garden or explore or play, and they also use service learning to engage the students. So they'll clean up wetlands or help out in their community. And through this, 
the students understand that there's a symbiotic relationship between the natural environment, their school, and their community, and they understand their role as citizens in each. Learning Day also uses project-based learning. Students get to choose a topic that they're interested in and do a project on it. Faculty members guide them to make sure they're still meeting the standards that they need to. So the students do anything from historical projects and building scale models to competing in a national solar design competition. And they have space to do so. This is a classroom where students can work independently or in teams or with their faculty advisor. And they learn how to be self-directed. They learn how to, how to collaborate. And they're really engaged because it's something that they're excited to learn about since they chose it. So at Learning Gate, they use these strategies. They use the constructivist philosophy that students need to explore and engage in order to construct their own knowledge. And the teachers use place-based and project-based learning experiences to integrate the subjects and get kids engaged in that. So all of the schools that I showed, they're all doing these three things. They've incorporated sustainability into their infrastructure, their educational program, and their organizational culture. And the students get it because it's a consistent message. They see it in action, they learn about it, and they play a vital role in it themselves. And they also see that they, they have a vital role to play in the sustainability of their future. They're empowered and prepared to do so. And each of the schools that I studied say that they're not done yet. Even though they've accomplished a lot, there's still a lot more to do. Because maybe it's just not enough to be just sustainable. Can we go beyond that? So it's a process for sure. And each of these schools are high performing academically. They're saving their districts thousands every year in operating costs. And their models in their community. So imagine if this was the norm, if all of our schools could be like this, what that would mean for the next generation. And I also want to leave you with a thought that each of you have a role to play in this. You all, many of you are students, many are parents, many are teachers, and all of you are community members. And since this is a process, small steps towards this are really vital. So start making those small steps in your schools. If you're community members, start volunteering. If you're a teacher, Get an after school club going, work with your district facilities to get some new programs. And if you're a student, really embrace your role because you have the most power than any other group. If you're excited about these ideas, then just do it. Make those changes because you can. A group of passionate students can do more than any adult. So thank you so much for your time. And I hope that you'll join me in making schools not just a place where learning happens to occur, but instead make them a place where students can experience sustainability, embrace it, and lead a sustainable future. Thank you.